I said today, so I'll keep doing that, you're good for now, that we're gonna want to share with you the state of the church address. I know there are a few extra people in the building simply because they knew I was gonna be talking about this kind of stuff. I made sure you got the word first. But this is just an extension of what God has already said and he's already doing in our midst. Amen? So it is 1239. Y'all ready to work? <laughs> I want us to go to, I'm going to read Ephesians 4, verse 15 and 16. And frame these next few moments and then we'll be out of here. Ephesians 4, verse 15 and 16 says, Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become even in every respect the, ma the mature body of him who is the head that is Christ. From him the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. These words capture our calling as a church to grow together in unity, rooted in love, with Christ at the very center. This verse reminds us that each of us plays a vital role in building up the body. Every ministry, every effort, every act of service comes together to make us stronger. Makes us stronger, makes us more united, and better equipped to fulfill our mission as I, and as I share our vision, our updates, and the goals, let us hold to the reminder that we are one body, somebody say one body, building each other up as each part does its work together. Together we are here to grow, serve, and be the light in our community, all for the glory of Christ. Read somewhere that it's the leader's job to define reality. So these words remind us that, that true leadership begins with clarity. Understanding where we are and where God is leading us. And how we can walk forward together. As we look back on 2024, we, we stand on the foundation of our theme, clear vision, Bold action, which called us to focus our eyes on God's plan for this community with courage and purpose. This year, clear vision guided us to assess the needs within our church and community, define our purpose with precision, and confront obstacles to growth with a steady gaze. Meanwhile, bold action inspired us to act on this vision, creating new ministries, supporting Capital City community services, and building systems that allow us to serve more effectively. Together, these guiding principles have prepared us to expand our reach, deepen our care, and move forward with God's power. For the last few weeks and months, we've been sharing in most of our meeting spaces our mission statement. I want us to read it together if we can get that up on the screen. We, are we going to get it? If we don't get out one, it's, <laughs> it's over here. Okay, I'll read it for you. We, the Capital City Seventh-day Adventist Church, are a grace-filled, multi-generational community of faith dedicated to continually growing into the image of Christ. We are committed to being rooted in Scripture, persistent in prayer, passionate in worship, generous in giving, and devoted to serving. I'll say it again. We are committed to being rooted in Scripture, persistent in prayer, passionate in worship, generous in giving, 
and devoted to serving. Over the next few months, I need us to memorize that. And I'm going to come up on you and give you a test. <laughs> but it needs to be a part of what we say about our church. We are rooted in what? Persisted in? Passionate in? Generous in? And devoted to? Serving. You'll get it. We're off to a good start. But growing in the image of Christ, we are striving to reflect the image of Christ. Rooted in Scripture just means that we are grounded, we ground our beliefs and actions daily in the Word of God, the wisdom of God's Word and its guidance. We believe that we have power through prayer, and we are constantly communicating with the God that we serve. You're passionate in worship. We approach worship with an enthusiasm and sincerity. We approach worship with an enthusiasm and sincerity. It's not all the same, but it's personal. Enthusiasm and sincerity, it's a passion. Honoring God with all our hearts, our souls, and our minds. We are generous in giving. We freely share our resources, time, and talents reflecting God's generosity towards us and supporting the work of his kingdom. And then devoted to serving, we commit to loving others through acts of service, embodying the hands and feet and the compassion model and care in our community. So when we look, over, look back over this past year, as we come to the close of this year, almost to the end of this year, can you believe it? The goal of 2024 was to bring clarity. Focus effort to ensure that our mission, motto, and operations are clear to every member. This clarity is essential to unifying our congregation and helping us understand not only what we can do, but why we do it. Throughout the year, we prioritize transparent communication. We've been sharing from the pulpit and sharing in different spaces honestly about what is happening, what is going on, what we see what God is doing, and how we can change and, and do things differently or, or do some things the same or do it better or do it in a spirit of excellence. And through that, we've outlined specific monthly focuses assuring to ensure, focuses to ensure everyone could see the bigger picture of how their individual contributions aligned with the shared purpose. So through ther- sermon series, we talked about giving clarity at the beginning of the year. We went through a series on doctrine called Essentials, if you remember, in the month of March. Then we had the Chosen series in the month of April. We dug in and had some fun movie nights in the fellowship hall. We had our Journey to Joy Bible Conference, which allowed us to do a deep dive into what God was doing and allowed a lot of us to learn the Bible from a new perspective, in a new way. Then in August, we went outside the box and talked about a church and a people that is outside the box and how God was outside the box. In June, we had uh, conversations with grief where we started to tackle some of the tough things that had been happening in our church community. In September, we had our town hall, and last month we were, we were graciously, graciously able to host our African-American conv- convocation and see how God is working across our region. But by clarifying our goals and expectations, we have strengthened our foundation, enabling us to move forward with purpose and confidence as a church family. And in 2024, we sought to eliminate confusion. I don't like confusion. Sought to enhance organizational structure and to provide a clear pathway for spiritual growth, service, and impact to our community. The clarity sets the stage for deeper engagement and greater capacity as we head into 2025. I can't go by without acknowledging that this year we experienced a significant transition. The departure of Pastor Chandler, who served faithfully and shaped our community over the last 10 years. His leadership and vision and passion were instrumental in building a strong foundation, and his impact is felt deeply by many. While his leaving presented a period of adjustment, and for some even grief, 
It also called us to lean on one another and on God more than ever. I am immensely grateful for the resilience, commitment, and unity shown by our congregation during this time. Through prayer, shared purpose, and trusting God's unfailing guidance, we have continued to move forward, honoring our past while embracing the new season. Somebody say new season. God has prepared us for. Together, we are reminded that even in times of change, God's plans are constant for us. God's plans for us are constant. And His faithfulness never wavers. So as we get into the state of our church, I want to talk about membership health. With the membership on the books of 889 as of last night, the average weekly attendance of 230, we see 25% of our listed membership in the building or operating from week to week. 25%. Capital City Church continues to focus on deepening engagement and retention. If I go in different spaces, whether it be in the board meetings or, or leadership meetings, I want to see how can we keep people, how we keep them engaged, how we keep them connected. This year we've taken an exciting step with the launch of the Fijian campus, amen? Designed to connect with and serve our Fijian members and the broader Fijian community here in the greater Sacramento area. The new campus represents our commitment to expanding our reach. So today it may be a Fijian campus, tomorrow it might be a southern campus or a northern campus. Are you with me? Don't tell you I didn't tell you. Don't say I didn't tell you. We can't be so comfortable here. Our motto is taking Sacramento for the? So we have to be in all parts of Sacramento in order to do that. I know we're part of a bigger body, but I don't think that we have to rely on the bigger body to do the work that we are called to do. In this, we recognize that evolving needs of our church. We acknowledge that many members join us from home, online, and connect with our service community virtually. So these members are an essential part of our community as well. There are people who can only come once a month or can't come at all, but they are religiously and dedicated, committed to being a part of this capital city community. And we want to acknowledge those people and find ways to connect them with the larger body. We are intentional with creating a virtual space that has a meaningful experience for them as well. We are developing virtual membership pathway, a virtual membership pathway. This includes a dedicated online space, virtual small groups, which we already have existing since COVID. Most of our meetings and stuff that happens is virtual. Just as of recent that we started to do things in person. And then a personal connection and support with our elders and leadership teams that allow us to, be, to serve well and support, ensuring that people feel connected and cared for. And we also have service opportunities for people to connect online and in different spaces where they live and be digital disciples and disciples in the areas which they live and serve. And by creating these pathways, we affirm that it's a commitment to be an inclusive, multi-generational community that embraces members wherever they are, ensuring that they all feel connected, valued, and supported in their faith journey. Financially, in 2023, we faced challenges that required us to carefully examine our spending and resource allocation. This period of reflection helped us identify key areas for improvement and prioritize financial stewardship in new ways. And we've since made strategic adjustments that emphasize efficiency and responsible management, enabling us to support essential church functions and expand our ministry impact. Amen. This year, our, our finances have been directed towards sustaining core programs, supporting community outreach, and launching new initiatives. While we celebrate these accomplishments, we recognize that ongoing growth in our financial health is crucial. 
Increased support from the congregation will allow us to continue enhancing worship experiences, expanding our outreach efforts, and ensuring that our mission is effectively carried out. Our commitment is to maintain transparency, educate each member on how our finances work. You've noticed through the year we've, we continually talk about where your money goes. When you check a box or when you sign on the dotted line, put your name down, where it goes and how it works. And then encourage stewardship and maximize every contribution for the glory of God. And I want to say a special thank you to our finance teams, our finance chair, our, our treasurer who work diligently, diligently, yes. And holding us accountable and stewarding the blessings God has given us. Over the last few, this year, we've done uh, renovations to our facility, and we're not done yet. Amen? Amen. We've refreshed our fellowship hall. We're able to do new, new flooring over there and through the whole, that whole side. We've enhanced our security system. We've um, updated the, the, the perimeter fence. All these things we were able to do through your giving and through the blessing that God has given us here and the stewardship of our funds was able, allowed us to be able to do these things. And we continue in the progress of completing the roof, we're at the roof on our fellowship hall side, which is about 95% complete. We are going to continue to, we're actually in the process of completing the windows that lead to our courtyard. If you actually go outside, you'll see that there's boards up and they've been working on their windows over the last week. But we'll have new windows, seven feet windows that allow the outdoor space to come into the indoor space. Amen? Amen. And also, in the next few weeks, we'll be breaking ground on our ADA bathroom. The permits are secure. They're just waiting for us to clear out the junk out of the space. Amen? <laughs> but God is moving, and we are, that is a, a, a sign that we are a multi-generational church because we want to make everyone feel comfortable, have a space, be able to, be act, be able to access this space. We have a lot of people who come and are physically challenged or have different special needs, so we want to be able to serve people well, our community impact, our community outreach efforts have had meaningful effort, effect on the lives of those we serve in this area. We are known for our Love Fest, our, our community feeding program that happens weekly and they serve hundreds on a weekly basis. And I want to take a moment to recognize and deeply appreciate the incredible people who serve on a weekly basis serve our community on a weekly basis, yes. Every event, every worship experience, every act of care and service is a testament to the faithfulness and love for this church family. I want to thank you each for your passion, your sacrifice, and steadfastness in advancing our mission together. Structurally, there's a framework that I want us to hear and begin to use and understand as we move forward. It's an acronym, C-E-O. Somebody say C-E-O. C-E-O. Yes. The C is care. Say care. care. To truly reflect the love of Christ, we are committed to building a strong culture of care. This means showing genuine compassion and support not only to our members, but all those in our community and those who join us as guests. By creating an environment of welcome, empathy, and intentional service, we will ensure that everyone who steps through the doors feels valued, connected, and embraced as a part of the Capital City family. Care. Somebody say care. E. Excellence. Mm, say it again. Excellence. Excellence in ministry is a reflection of our respect and reverence for God. I'll say it again. Excellence in ministry is a reflection of our respect and reverence for God. We will approach each area of ministry with intentionality, zeal, and dedication. From the top down, we are focused on developing a healthy administrative culture that empowers our staff, 
our volunteers, and, and develops leadership teams to work together seamlessly. This is a commitment beyond mere performance. It's about cultivating a culture of enthusiasm and joy for God's house and his work. Through careful preparation, somebody say preparation, creativity and consistency, we are aimed to glorify God in everything we do. So we have C, which is? We have E, which is? And we have O, which is operation. Yes. Effective and efficient operations are essential for sustaining our ministries and ensuring smooth, consistent church experiences. We are focused on developing a healthy administrative culture that empowers our staff, our volunteers, and leadership teams to work together seamlessly. And by refining our operational processes and enhancing communication, we will create a stable and organized, a stable and organized environment that supports every aspect of our church, church's mission and ministry flow, allowing us to serve our congregation and community with greater impact. Care, excellence, operation. Now this is an important piece of what we do here. I want to introduce to you Capital City Champions. Who are Capital City Champions? All of you. This is the new language you will use for our volunteers. Anyone who serves here is a champion. Gives us back to the model of Christ who served and was the greatest. So through it's our through our service that we become great. Champions. Our volunteers are champions and this change reflects not only the vital role of our volunteers that they play in the life of our church, but also our commitment to honoring and celebrating each of your contributions. Each champion embodies a spirit of service, demonstrating the heart of Christ through their willingness to step up and make a difference. As we strive for excellence in our ministries and respond to the evolving needs of our congregation, we'll be shifting our organizational structure. We are transitioning to director titles for key leadership positions. And you'll get a handout on your way out so you can review this thing, these things. Amen? Amen? But we have a director of children, director of congregational care, director of membership services, director of ministries, director of production, director of worship and arts, and our youth and young adults. The change only provides clarity in role and responsibility, but aligns us with the best practices for effective leadership. You all celebrated me and, 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 and pushed me when I came here to finish my schooling. So I'm putting my education to work. Amen? <laughs> my degree is in organizational leadership. So now you understand how this all gonna, <laughs> gives you a little insight. But you all, you all pushed me to finish, so it's your fault. <laughs> But our long-range goal is to establish dedicated church staff. One thing when you see ministry happening all around the world and just in different spaces, it's hard to do part-time ministry. Ministry is not a part-time job. At one point, before I came here, I was a part-time pastor doing full-time work. There's no such thing as part-time ministry. So we have to be able to shift and be able to support full-time staffing and ministry here at Capital City and make it a part of our DNA. By implementing implementing this new structure, we want to enhance the quality and impact of our ministries. We want to provide clear pathways and accountability. Somebody say accountability. And communication within the church. And we want to ensure stability, sustainability, and growth. We've been here almost 75 years. Our church has been in existence almost 75 years. And I don't know when Jesus is coming, but until he comes, I want us to operate well. A key addition 
ministry that I want to highlight, and we'll talk about the, some of the others later on down the line. Over the next few weeks as we close out this year, I'll be sharing different things on different aspects of it and introducing new people, introducing uh, new departments and describing how they work to you as we continue to grow and finish this year strong. But one that is very important and I think is going to be vital to our growth is our congregational care department. It's ensuring that every member of Capital City receives dedicated spiritual and emotional support. And it's designed to create a close-knit and caring community or environment that help members feel seen, supported, and valued. You hear some of the same language. Our elders, we have some amazing elders. Can we put our hands together for our elders? They will be a key element in this, assuming role as tribe or group leaders. And by assigning elders specific groups or tribes, we will break down our congregation in ways so that they will be able to be served well and you will have someone who is specifically assigned to you and to serve you in addition to me as your pastor. Amen? Amen. Twenty twenty-five. And now, one of the important things I think is of utmost importance that we heard in our town hall space was our children and our youth. I will tell you two things as I whiz through this last piece. I'm not replacing myself as a, with an associate pastor. I am waiting to hire a youth pastor. So that means over the next few months, we all have work to do together to keep this thing up and keep this thing going and to serve our children and our youth well. Amen. Amen. So we will be focusing on those areas and we need champions to get plugged into these areas. Doesn't have to be every week doesn't have to be every Sabbath, but at least once a month, get into a rotation of helping our, 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 le- our children's leaders serve. Yeah. One of the things that I hear often, or one of the challenges, people coming to church and there's nowhere for their kids to go. We have to be intentional about what we pour into our children. So let's create an intentional space that allows families to come into our church together Mommy and daddy get what they need, the children get what they need, the youth get what they need, and we all grow together in Christ. One thing that I want to touch on is that in 2025, we plan to expand our focus on mental health and emotional wellness. We're looking to create a partnership with um, organizations that will be dedicated to supporting individuals through, who are facing mental health challenges, emotional challenges, and this partnership aims to address the significant mental health needs within our community. The spe- and the significant mental health needs within our church. There's a lot of hurt and trauma in this space. And if we're going to be able to grow, we have to heal. But please understand, that's not my profession. So what will I do? We will walk alongside people who are professionals, people who have the skills to go do the deep dive and unpack those things. I am not that guy. I am your spiritual. (laughs) Yeah, no, let's be real. And some of y'all need more than prayer. (laughs) 
Yes, I like, we all do. I need more than prayer sometimes. But we, this is a holistic, it's holistic growth. It's not just, yeah, it's spirit lit, and great praise and worship, all that. No. How are you doing? How are you living? How are you able to navigate life? We spend two hours here every week. There's a lot more time in the week that you're not here. How, do you, how are you able to manage those spaces and those times? There's tools, there's so much out there that we want to be able to be a good steward of and partner with to give our membership the support and our community the support they need to live well. Amen? Last piece. So as we look towards 2025, I want you to keep this word at the forefront of your mind. This past year, we talked about clear vision, bold action. Next year, our focus will be this one word, capacity. Capacity. And know what's clever about it? Cap city with the A in the middle. No, <laughs> clever. <laughs> so you won't forget capacity but we recognize that God calls us to expand our faith our vision and service beyond our limits it's rooted in Ephesians 3 verse 20 which says now unto him who is able to do immeasurably more than all that we can ask or imagine according to his power somebody say his power that is at work within us we understand that we have great things to accomplish, but it's through his power working in us and through us. So as we grow in our capacity to love, to lead, and to serve, we rely on God's limitless power through us to transform lives, communities, and our world for his glory. This year, we step into new possibilities, trusting God to enlarge our hearts and increase our impacts. So, finally, what can you do? Our call to action for each of our members. Some of you are in here and you're not members. So the first thing you can do is join. Become a member. Capital City, someone is classified as a member when they have made a commitment to join our faith community through either baptism or profession of faith or through transfer of membership from another Adventist fellowship but also they have active participation and commitment to this space. I'll say that again. Beyond baptism and profession of faith, they are active participants, active participants, active participants, and have a commitment. We just talked about it all in. Commitment to engage in the life of our church. This includes regularly attending worship services, participating in fellowship and small groups and supporting the church's mission through service, prayer, and giving and stewardship. So join. The second way is, if you remember, serve. We said we are devoted to? We are devoted to? Serving. So step up as a champion. Our ministries the life of our church depends on it. Depends on our volunteers to thrive from children's programming to outreach to our media and production to everything in between. There's a lot of things that happen not only on Sabbaths but during the week. Serve. Tell your neighbor, serve. Find a way to plug in. You can go to our website, capitalcitysda.org slash serve. Real simple. Sign up to serve and be a part. Join, serve, share. Are you impacted by what happens here? Amen. It's a question. If you're impacted by what happens here, if it feeds you, if you have grown from it, if it blesses you, share that.
friends, relatives, neighbors, whoever, they need to know why you look so good, <laughs> why you're blessed, why you don't go off on them when you really should. <laughs> Speaking prophetically to some of you. <laughs> but share. Share online. When we put things out online, share that and be a digital disciple. Share when you go, when you're talking in the grocery store. Don't be weird about it. <laughs> but share. Let people know where you go, what you're connected to, what you're a part of, and how it has been a blessing to your life. Join, serve, share, and finally, commit to grow. <laughs> Yes, you can clap on grow. Yeah. She almost felt out of place for clapping on grow. No. Yes, we all want to grow. Next year, this time, we shouldn't be having the same conversations. That's the teacher in me. I didn't go to school for theology. I went to school for education. And then I went to do the theology stuff and all that beyond. But I started as an elementary teacher. And when we start at the beginning of the year, we have goals. And we say, by the end of the school year, you need to be hitting these things so that you can graduate. Put on your cap and gown and move on to the next level. We're not going to do all that graduation every year, but we should see growth. When people come to the space, they shouldn't leave here the same. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, through the culture of growth and development and care, through our CEO, care, excellence, and the way we operate, they should be inclined to grow and develop. We should be inclined to grow and develop. Together, by doing all these things, we will take Sacramento for the King. I want to thank you for the extra time, but I believe what we shared was important. And I want to be, I want to continue to be honest and upfront, and transparent about what God is telling me and be a good steward of this leadership role that you have entrusted me with. There is work for us to do. There are lives and people for us to touch. There are people in your own household that need to grow, that need, to, that need the love of Jesus. So let's commit to doing this together. I tell you all the time, I can't do this alone, and I don't want to do this alone. When I dream, I dream big enough for people to find their place inside of it. And I know this is not conventional, this is not what we normally do, or, but I want to share the dream so that you can see yourself inside of it. And as we do this, we'll see each of us grow leaps and bounds and see the kingdom of God populated so that his kingdom can now come so that we can be with him in the earth made new. If you want to commit to being a part of this journey, being a part of this community, I want you to stand to your feet in this building. If you're committed to being a part of what's happening here at Capital City, if you haven't already, make sure your information is up to date. Go to Capital City forward slash member and update your information. If you want to serve, forward slash capitalcitysda.org, forward slash serve. Plug in to serve. There's areas where we need you. We can't do this alone. But I believe God is going to do amazing things through us. But we're going to do it together. Amen? Amen. Let's sing this and then we'll get out of here. I need you. You need me. We're all apart. 
and of God's body stand with me. We're all a part of God's body. It is His that every need. Now point at somebody. You are in love. I need you to survive. You are important. You are in love. I need you to survive. I pray for you. You pray for me. I love you. I need you to. This is important. Harm you with words from my mouth. I love you. I need. Let's sing that one more time. I pray for you. You pray for me. I love you. I need you to serve. I won't harm you with words from my mouth. I love you. I need you to survive. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for being with us here today. We thank you for your word through this, the, this, the, the sermon, reminding us that we have you. And if we have you, you can give us the courage to cross any Jordan any river. Now, Father, as we close out this service and close out this year, continues to give us clarity and boldness. Continue to bind our hearts and minds together and unify us under the umbrella of your love. Father, we want to do everything that is pleasing in your sight. We want to walk in step and be in tune with your heart. So, Father, continue to speak to us. Continue to pour out your spirit. Continue to unite us so that we will be a force in this city. Father, the world needs you. The world needs your love. The world needs your peace. The world needs joy. The world needs you. And as we navigate this season of so much uncertainty, Father, I pray in a special way for the election that will happen this week. Father, I know there is anxiety and angst all over, but I pray a spirit of peace over your people and everyone we're connected to because we know how the story ends. We know that you are still on the throne. We know that you are God over everything. So no matter who sits in the presidency, no matter who sits in the White House, you are still God. So help us to walk in confidence knowing that you are in control. Help us to love our brother and sister knowing who is in control. Help us to lay down our angst for those who sit on the other opposite side of the aisle because you are in control. <sighs> Father, make us ready for your soon return. Help us to be faithful to your call on us individually and collectively. Thank you. Be with us now as we leave this place, but never your presence. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you so much for sticking with us, those who stayed with us online. I thank you, and I pray God's blessing over you as you navigate this new week. If you'd like a packet or a, a handout for what we just shared, see us at the back and you'll be able to get one. And remember tomorrow or tonight, time goes back. Amen. Praise God.